Booktube. We're going to continue with our library tour. We are in the darkest depths of Mordor. <laughs> For those of you who might be joining us new, uh, there's a, a wooden hutch, an indentation in the wall of the living room here that has bookshelves built in and so has completely filled with books. <laughs> so see if I can get it a little closer there. Well, maybe not. Well, anyway, uh, as is the way with book people, I have just filled it with books. I, chucked stuff in here until it's double and triple piled. Uh, and that, <laughs> for some unknown reason, is the subject of our latest library <laughs> tour. So we're in, uh, oh god, I don't even know. It's still, we're still in the second shelf of the darkest pits of Mordor here. Uh, but I think we're going to finish the second shelf this time around. I don't want any of these videos to go too long, but because uh, there's god knows how many of them to go. I forgot, I, un I underestimated what an undertaking this is to go through this hutch from start to finish. <laughs> Uh, but we'll do we'll finish off this shelf and then we'll move on. So what have we got here? And the reason why I'm often appearing surprised when I pull something down off the shelf is because I literally don't look at these shelves. I know how badly I abuse the space. And and so I don't wanna I don't wanna confront it. <laughs> so so I often am seeing things here for the first time in a long time, which is a perfect reason why they shouldn't be here. Why I shouldn't have them at all if I'm not going looking for them. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let's see what we have. Oh, oh, wonderful. Uh, this is uh, Rumpole a la carte by John Mortimer, the, the adventures of his uh, old Bailey hack, Horace Rumpole. Uh, I think I have this, well, I love the stories in Rumpole a la carte, uh, but I think I have this one mainly for the incredible cover art. Just amazing. Every single item of, of the Rumpole repertoire is there. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Fantastic. All right, where are we going to put these things? All right, well, what's the next? Oh, good. The next one is also uh, Rumpole on Trial. This is another collection of Rumpole stories. Also, I think, uh, kept for the gorgeous cover. All right, look at how beautiful that is. The, there's the the besoiled wig <laughs> and the... the uh, the brief from number three equity court and there is the glass of chateau thames embankment at the end of a hard day in court <laughs> wonderful okay uh let's see oh all right okay okay great i don't know why where this came from this is also rumpole this is the the uh, collected short stories of rumpole the in the penguin modern classics uh set i i love the look of these things so i think that's why i have it maybe i found it used I don't think Penguin sent this to me, uh, but anyway, uh, it was a perfect example of why I need to examine the books in this hutch, because this probably has all of the stories that are in those first two volumes, or in any of the other Rumpole omnibuses that are probably in this hutch. It's, I, if I'm not going to get rid of any of them, I at least ought to know what's there. I at least ought to have a completely firm grasp on what's here. But this, this particular library tour is a kick in the pants for me to do that, so it's good for us. Uh, let's see. What are, oh, oh, great. Okay, this is uh, something we've seen before. I, I showed it to you when I was showing you a, a surefire way to fix mold in a book. <laughs> this is a trade paperback of Elizabeth and Essex uh, by Lytton Strachey. This is uh, an absolutely fantastic uh, work of history. Uh, if you love the the Tudor era, if you love the you know the Elizabethan subset of the Tudor era, if you love crystalline prose, oh my God, this guy could write. Then uh, this is this is a recent reprint uh, by I.B. Taurus, I think, uh, but there it's had many many editions. I'm sure you can find it, and it's well worth the search. Uh, and what's here? Another one of the penguin. It looks like. Oh, oh my! <laughs> In the last installment of this library tour, I held up the Friends of Eddie Coyle uh, and said that this is real, dude, bro, lit. This is the kind of uh, the true inheritor. Of, of that American tradition, as opposed to all of the fake posers who are just removing quotation marks, capital letters, and periods from their prose and thinking that makes them something. Uh, I held that book up as an example. This is another author who, in his youth, in his early novels, was a perfect example of that. The real thing instead of the fake. This is Pete Dexter, who I've mentioned on this channel before. And this is his, I believe, his debut novel, God's Pocket. Or maybe Deadwood was first. But this is the first one that got him, this is contemporary fiction, and it's the first one that got him widespread notice. And it is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. It's not about all that much. Uh, but God Almighty, the violence that erupts almost right away is just, it's it centered, at first it's centered on a construction site, and it's horrifyingly brutal, and, and yet beautifully done. Uh, just uh, it, God's pocket, 
ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you if you see it, give it a try. Find it at the library. It's it's a reading experience, uh, and there are chunks of it in the, at the beginning and especially at the end that you won't forget. Uh, and this next one is fairly thick. What is this? Oh, oh, this is a beautiful Europa edition. Oh, very nice. This is a uh, The Eyes of Venice by Alessandro Barbaro. This is a big fat novel of Venice uh, that I got, look at that, I got it from Europa a long time ago, I think. When was this? When was this? 2012. Good Lord, I've been doing this thing a while. <laughs> and I remember really liking it. I have a sweet spot for books on Venice, and even so, novels about Venice are tough to do. They're tough to do without, without reeking of research, and this one does, so I, I liked it for that. And what's next here? Okay, another example of that. This is A Thousand Days in Venice uh, by Marlena de Blasi, uh, which is, it's, it's a, it, the, don't let the shape, it's got a somewhat un, unconventional shape. Don't let the shape fool you. It's a romance novel, uh, but it's a really good one. Smart and sensitive, uh, so I, and, and uh, averse to easy answers, which I, I kind of like in romance novels. Uh, let's see what's next here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is the, uh, the, the uh, BBC cover for Evelyn Waugh's Brideshead Revisited. Look at that. There's our cast as young people, and there's the rest of the cast. <laughs> Those of you who know the, uh, the miniseries will smile at the sight of this and breathe a deep sigh, and, and so do I. It has exactly that effect on me. But, uh, and this has lots of, uh, lots of stuff that someone has put in here. It wasn't me. Um, but it also has lots of scuffings on the cover. Look at that. So why do I have this? <laughs> I mean, not, not why do I have the novel. I absolutely love the novel and can quote huge chunks of it from memory. No, it's, it's why do I have this particular thing? Not out of sentimentality for the pictures on the cover, since I can I can reproduce those online at any time, and not for the stuff that's stuck in the inside, because I can put that anywhere. I I need to. Okay. Well. Anyway, Brides had revisited. Talk about a recommendation. But I've recommended it on this channel before, I think. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of hard covers, and then we're done. That wasn't hard. What's this? Oh, okay. All right. This is a novel about a, an overeducated, beautiful young man. This is hindsight. A Blind Sight, and it's by Meg Howery, and the reason why I got it, this was from uh, years ago, this was from like 2010, 2011, uh, the reason why I got this book uh, was out of curiosity because of this book, <laughs> uh, The Wanderers, uh, also by her, that I, uh, I read and really, really liked, I really enjoyed this book, this was from what, uh, does it have the pub sheet in it, this was from last year, I think, uh, no, no, this, this was from March of this year. <laughs> the books just pile up. <laughs> uh, I read this and really liked it and then thought, well, you know, that was, that was an author that I would read something else by. And then, totally unconnected, without searching, I found uh, Blindsight at uh, a library sale and grabbed it uh, and read it and was impressed. Although, as we've covered on this channel before, having liked a book is not sufficient reason for keeping a book. Having, let me, let's go over that again. Having liked a book is not sufficient reason for keeping a book. <laughs> I'm mainly browbeating myself there, so don't feel too put upon it. Uh, let's see, what's next here? Another novel. Oh, uh, Greg Hurwitz, The Survivor. I've mentioned this book before. It has an absolutely killer opening where the main character, a haunted vet, who's literally haunted the ghost of, of a dead friend of his is literally appearing to him all the time and, and giving him all sorts of sass. Uh, he's learned that he has a fatal neurological illness that will debilitate him rather than kill him cleanly. So he decides to kill himself. Uh, and he searches out a building with a tall enough building that has an outside ledge so that he can make his way up there, go out onto the ledge, and then jump. Uh, and he does find such a building, and he does find egress to such a ledge, and then he realizes that if he does it, if he jumps where, there, where he's come out onto the ledge, he's going to fall on the sidewalk and some kid might see him. Or he might land on somebody, God forbid. So he makes his way around the building looking for a plunge that will put him in a dumpster. <laughs> and when he's about ready to do that, he finds himself outside the window of a bank in which a robbery is taking place. And his heroic instincts kick in. And he's, he's the one person the robbers don't expect. Someone outside. 
<laughs> and he interrupts the robbery and, and foils it. And the robbers are cat's paws of a, a really hissable supervillain. And he is not happy. <laughs> and there follows a, 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 a massive back and forth revenge campaign between the two of them that's just fantastic to read. This author is so good. And unlike most fiction authors that I've mentioned uh, on this channel, you know, for however many thousands of videos it's been, he understands what it means to end a book. He understands what an ending is. It isn't just that you pack up your cocaine and leave, it's that you conclude your story. And oh, the conclusion he gives, oh, I, I, I could kiss him. It is perfect in every way. In the inevitable movie, they will screw it up. I feel certain that they will, but oh. oh. Uh, all right, so what's next here? Uh, oh, okay, great. This is uh, Peter DeRosa. This is an older novel called Pope Patrick. Uh, in which an a, a Irish priest, through a weird concatenation of events, becomes Pope. And he's not indoctrinated by the Vatican Curia, and he's not indoctrinated by any kind of business mode. He is simply a Christian. He is, he's actually a legitimate Christian. <laughs> and the, the novel's scandalous premise is what would happen if a believing, practicing, serious Christian became head of the church. <laughs> and it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. There are set pieces about uh, the British in Northern Ireland. There are set pieces about terrorism. There are set pieces about uh, the institutionalization of faith. And there are all sorts of jokes. And, of course, the Pope has a dog. <laughs> at one point, uh, when at one point, there's just a tossed-off quick where, where somebody says that if dogs have souls at all, they're certainly different from human souls. And, Le and Pope Patrick thinks in his head, yes, they're better. <laughs> wonderful book i'm sure that pope patrick is out of print but oh my god what and probably not in libraries either mid list stuff like this from uh, 15 20 years ago is exactly the sort of thing that disappears from libraries and never returns so i don't know where you would find this but oh <laughs> it, it and survivor these are wonderful novels novels that you would really really enjoy uh, and then we get the last one the last one here is it's wedged into the shelf a perfect illustration of what's wrong with this kind of book hoarding. It's wedged into the shelf. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Okay, this is this is the hardcover of Larry Kramer's The American People, Volume One: Search for My Heart, a gigantic historical novel that is uh, very, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly, I don't understand it still, and I reviewed it. <laughs> it's very, very strange. You know, I keep meaning to see, I, and this reminds me, I keep meaning to look to see if my uh, review of this uh, is on the paperback. Or if this is, is this even out in paperback? I don't even know. Isn't that terrible? I ought to know that. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a Gay Fantasia on American history, <laughs> leading up to the present day. There's going to be another volume, God help us all, that will deal with the present day. This is history, the history of America, you can tell from George Washington on the cover. This, oh, <laughs> this is, a Larry Kramer is a lionized and demonized figure in, in the history of gay liberation in the 20th century. He's also the author of uh, some really good but very incendiary books. Uh, and this is perhaps the most incendiary thing he's ever written, although I don't think anybody read it because it's so big and, and a little bit weird, uh, a lot weird. <laughs> uh, but oh my God, talk about acidic comedy. Oh, <laughs> it's just, it's all through here. Just merciless, merciless, angry, biting satire on every page. <laughs> uh, it's not for everybody, but oh, my, what a book. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's it. That is the the second the second shelf of the of Darkest Mortar is now done, <laughs> so we move on to the, to the third shelf and oh my God I've got this all set up so I don't know if I'd lose you if I tried to move it but you should see what this shirt third shelf looks like. It looks like somebody took a big dump truck, backed it up full of books, backed it up and just upended it onto a shelf inside a hutch. It's going to take us I don't know years. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, I'll leave you alone for now, BookTube, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.